Welcome, Trinidad and Tobago, to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. Public consultations on constitutional reform kick off in Makoya. Outgoing President Richards praised by the Scouts Association. The Ministry of the People moves into yet another community. We begin with word that in the following months, the national community will have the opportunity to voice their concerns on the laws that govern Trinidad and Tobago. This as the Ministry of Legal Affairs has begun its public consultations towards the constitutional reform. The first of 17 national constitutional reform consultations took place at the Center of Excellence. A number of civilians came out on Monday to make recommendations and be a part of the historical democratic move piloted by the People's Partnership Administration. Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Prakash Ramanda, says the forum comes in light of the cries of citizens to treat with a change in environment. The People's Partnership came in on a promise that is listed in its manifesto and among the many promises that we have made is to ensure that we reform our constitution because of the cries of our citizens who sense a need to adjust to a changing environment, to a changing world. And laws, yes, they are made to govern, but certainly it is the people who shall make the law to govern us. And from time to time, societies need to look at that structure and assimilate and appreciate where there's need to improve, where things are good to be left alone, there's always room for improve, improvement in life. This is what this is about. The Honourable Minister has given the assurance that the public consultations would expand across Trinidad and Tobago so that a wide cross-section of opinions would be extensively sought. We have a fixed constitution, 1976, with amendments to this date. But over the last several years, in fact, for the last generation, there have been calls to revisit. This is our chance to revisit. You have a political commitment to make the changes that the people say they wish for. As a result of which, we have decided to have at least 17 consultations, this being the very first. And we shall go through the length and breadth of Trinidad and Tobago. Minister Ramada also noted that the consultations would move from simply a public setting to the offices and comfort zones of those whose opinions would be of great value and necessity. Because we believe that there are interest groups, political parties, NGOs, who we shall give the respect to go to them. You have given us the respect of coming to us today and we have come to you. So it is across all divides, geographical, um, economic, or whatever strata of society we belong to, we have an equal opportunity to say our peace and to really become part of the change that we wish to see in our nation. At the end of the first day of consultations, Minister Ramadar said he was pleased with the way in which the forum took place and the contributions that were made. He says there is a very committed team of commissioners, lawyers and support staff who would ensure that the voice of the people is best represented in the constitutional reform. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. A new constitution is a chance to help unlock the country's potential. These are the views expressed by Senate President Timothy Hamill Smith and Chief Justice Ivor Archie during the launch of the National Consultation for Constitutional Reform. The best is yet to come. That's the hope being expressed by Senate President Timothy Hamill Smith at the proposed constitutional reform. Echoing similar sentiments shared by Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa that in order for a nation to grow, change must occur. Hamill Smith says it's only then will a country's true potential shine. He was speaking at the launch of the National Consultation for Constitutional Reform. It is my fond hope that as we embark on this Constitution consultation, it will engender debate on constitutional issues within the widest possible public arena, so that together, as citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, we can formulate a constitution which will foster the conditions for developing 
our full potential. Meanwhile, Chief Justice Ivor Archie says constitutional reform can be the answer towards truly unifying our nation by embracing our diversity. We must move forward with a governance structure that is not based on appeasement, but rather on an acceptance of and a respect for the worth and the diversity that exists within all of us. By grasping the nettle of constitutional reform, we now have an opportunity to address it and to unify the nation. I believe that we are a wonderfully diverse people, and it is that strength that we must now leverage. And so essential to the exercise upon which we are about to embark is the resolution of two questions. Who are we? And what is a constitution for? The CJ adds that drafting a new constitution represents a chance to get our governance right as a nation. This presents us with an extraordinary opportunity to finally get it right. A new constitution must represent something far more fundamental than an amendment or revision of the existing constitutional arrangement. It should be a complete rewrite from the ground up of the social contract that is, that is to govern the way in which we and our institutions function and interrelate. Senate President Timothy Hamill Smith says such improved quality in governance depends on harnessing the views of all citizens in the process of reform. If we channel the views of citizens into the decision-making process, not only will we have better governance, but as a people, we will take more responsibility and be more patriotic in supporting the national interests and development of Trinidad and Tobago. It is suggested that the public will take greater ownership of the document, which aims at encouraging transparency and equality through the consultation process. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. After the break, the scouts shower praises unto outgoing President Richards. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Scouts Association of Trinidad and Tobago have gathered to bid His Excellency Professor George Maxwell Richards, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, adieu and to say thanks for his years of service nationally and in the movement. The Scouts also thanked the President for maintaining that noble tradition by his acceptance to serve as Chief Scout of the country. Delivering remarks at the farewell rally for His Excellency Professor George Maxwell Richards, President of the Scout Association, Comrade Anthony S. Franklin, says Scout leaders have always been generous, not just with their money, but with a far more precious resource, their time. This you have demonstrated here today, the generosity of your time. We are aware that these last few days in office, must present you with a very busy and tight schedule. And that is why we certainly deeply appreciate your giving up your one of your last Saturday afternoons to be with us. He expressed the Scouts' most sincere appreciation for the kind interest that the President has taken in the Scout movement during his term in office. This turnout this afternoon of approximately 2,020 Scouts, Scouts, Cubs and their leaders to serve to say farewell is a display of the tremendous esteem with which you are held, especially because of your admirable and valuable service to the country. In his remarks, President George Maxwell Richards praised the new dynamism and growth among the Scouts. He complimented the new executive for coming up to the plate and putting its best foot forward. In my experience, events such as these require a lot of attention to detail and clearly this was in evidence throughout this afternoon's proceedings. He also reminded the stakeholders the future lays in the youth, exemplified by the Cub Scouts. He reminded them his successor, President-elect Justice Anthony Camona, has a special place in his heart for young people. And therefore, I think he would be 
an absolutely splendid resource for the Scout Association were he to agree to serve as Chief Scout. The commander congratulated the president for his attire, properly dressed in his national scarf, which reflects his position as Chief Scout. Comrade Anthony Franklin adds that his service as head of state has continuously displayed good scouting values in his duty to God and country and contribution to the education of young people through a value-based system. One of the hallmarks of your service as head of state is reflective of the genuine scout value of patriotism. Scouts define patriotism as doing what's best for our country. Patriotism flows from a genuine love for our country, a love for the ideals of liberty and opportunity, for the guarantee of our constitution, and for the land that both nourishes, nourishes us and inspires us. Among those present were Chairman of the Inter-American Scout Committee, Michael Bradshaw, and Azumadin Khan, National Scout Commissioner. The program included a fanfare, flag break, inspection, the Grand Howl, a march pass, scouts, and venture scouts. It also included several tributes in the form of drumology by Mason Hall Ventures from Tobago, Calypsos, and even Tassa. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Men in Trinidad and Tobago are being urged to contribute to crime prevention in this country. The call comes from Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Dr. Wendy Kwamena York. Without a mentor in life, one can easily succumb to folly. Without a mentor in life, one can easily become self-centered and arrogant. The men of the nation are being called upon to play their role in mentoring the young persons around them. This as the National Mentorship Program held a Mentor Appreciation Cocktail. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Dr. Wendy York, explains that crime-fighting initiatives come in many forms, the National Mentorship Program being one of them. She says citizens all have a part to play in the prevention of crime. The Ministry of National Security, as the lead ministry in this program, accepts that there is that inextricable link between the youth development and crime prevention. We take the mandate of national security seriously, but recognize the difficult challenge of addressing crime in Trinidad and Tobago. We cannot do it alone. Using a proactive approach, the mentorship program is a crime prevention strategy. Certainly, this program cannot be a success without the help of citizens like your good selves. A mentorship program remains a very good idea without mentors. She's asking men in particular to take up the mantle and save the nation's youth. The pressing need is for us to attract more worthy males to volunteer as mentors. I implore you to be an advocate mentor, to encourage your colleagues, your friends, your relatives to join us and become mentors and let us together assist in saving our country's heritage, our country's youth. The National Mentorship Program was started two years ago following recommendations given during a series of public consultations held across Trinidad and Tobago. It is believed that the Mentorship Program will assist in reducing deviant behavior among youths. The mentees participate in a two-week live-in camp during which they are taught self-discipline and self-control. They are given the opportunity to partake in interactive activities which encourage leadership, teamwork, cooperation, empathy, and responsible behavior. The camp also assists in developing self-confidence, independence, and a positive self-image. Program coordinator Gabriel Kumbamak says the program has already seen various levels of success, and he expects even more from it moving forward. We are growing, and as the, uh, the months pass, you will realize that we are going to evolve into a new being one that is more effective, more efficient, and one that will spread its wings even greater. 
Gregory McBurney, News 4. Up next, Wayne Cunningham with the latest in sports. Stay with us. Welcome back. Following two rounds of matches, Guaya United and Malaba FC are at the top of the standing in the National Super League Qualification Tournament. The surprise of the competition so far is pre-tournament favourites Point Fortin Civic Centre was failed to live up to the lofty tag thus far. Wayne Cunningham has a rundown of the scores from round two. Bethel United made full use of home advantage when the second round of matches in the National Super League Qualification Tournament was contested. The Tobago champions defeated their Northern Association counterparts, St. Francois National 3-1 at the Plymouth Recreation Ground. The Belmont team jumped out to a 28-minute lead off the boot of Lorne Joseph. But Nicholas Baldwin equalized in the 39 for Bethel as the teams went in even at the halftime break. 12 minutes from full time, Karen Williams put the home team ahead and the victory was sealed in the 89th by Jeremy Toby. Up at the Guayaguayari Recreation Ground, the home team was also triumphant as the Eastern Counties champs, Guaya United, registered their first win of the contest. And it was a big one. Pre-tournament favourites, Point Fortin Civic Centre, came calling and were handed a 5-1 trouncing. Carlin Hughes was a hat-trick hero for Guaya, scoring in the third, 29th and 54th minutes. Matthew Bartholomew pulled one back for a point in the 20th. But the match was over as a contest when Ryan Stewart scored in the 67th for the home team. Aaron Thomas rounded out the scoring for Guaya in the 78th. Eastern champions Malabar FC had an even more impressive win over Central Association champs Enterprise Youths. The scores were even at nil-nil by the end of the first half, but as soon as the second period started, the floodgates were opened. Michael Hospitalis, with a brace, started the ball rolling in the 46th and 60th minutes for Malabar FC. Stephen Stout, Chandel Samuel and Kevin Cornwall then netted to make it 5-0 by the 80th minute. Stephen Whiteman pulled one back for Enterprise, but Malabar was not done, as Norrell George put the icing on the cake in the 87th minute to make it a 6-1 win for Julian Edwards and his team. The victory put Malabar on 6 points and joined top spot with Guayo United. Bettel are in third, just ahead of Enterprise on goal difference while the winless St. Francois Nationals and Point Fortin Civic Centre are in 5th and 6th places respectively. Those two will get their chance at some points when they meet in the third round at the Hainsby Crawford Stadium training field this coming Sunday at 4pm. Also on the fixture will be Guaya vs Malabar in Guayaguayari at 3.30pm. While Plymouth in Tobago will be the venue for a 5pm clash between Bethel United and Enterprise Youths. Wayne Cunningham. News for Sports. When we return, we tell you what's the latest in the Ministry of the People and Social Development. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Direct Effect program has moved into another community to directly understand the needs and concerns of its residents. Minister of the People and Social Development and Member of Parliament for Karani Central, Dr. the Honorable Glenn Ramadar Singh toured La Cuisa Road, Freeport on Saturday. The minister and several members of staff from his ministry and constituency office embarked on the walkabout as part of the Direct Effect program. Minister Ramadar Singh spoke of the frequency and impact of such walkabouts. We are going to have these walkabouts every Saturday morning. I've already come from uh, the Grand Couva area and the Mayo area, where I met with some of the people who had um, felt it necessary to pro uh, protest. Um, we had a very good meeting, constructive dialogue. I went through the range of um, government services and government facilitation that can take place in that community to ensure that there's water, there's lights, um, recreation grounds, pavilion. But while we do this, there's nothing like getting the feedback from the people. And on a Saturday, and indeed on a Sunday, we find a lot of our people at home 
where we can engage the citizenry, get their views on national issues, get their views on the local community, get their ideas, things that they experience, and feed that back in our meetings, which we have on Monday at the ministry, and indeed um, as we collaborate with our colleagues during the week. So it, 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 form, it forms a very critical part of our whole um, system, the feedback from the ground. The minister greeted several residents along the way with the objective of reaching out to the most vulnerable. Such a program has never been embarked upon with this level of intensity. This is an approach to the task at hand which has been taken across all government ministries and arms that fall under the current People's Partnership Administration. With this in mind and the feedback received, the Honourable Minister stated that the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago are very satisfied with the government. I think people are very, very um, satisfied with the government. Certain areas that have um, suffered from what is called rural neglect, the neglect that was engineered by a particular administration to only have high-rise buildings in one part of the capital city while certain parts of Fireburn in uh, Freeport and in certain parts of Ikakas and Maruga didn't have water for people to drink. I think that they, they appreciate the reprioritization where the focus is on the people and human development and what the people want in their local communities. These are the issues. People are very um, gratified for the little infrastructural works that is happening in their community. They look forward to more. They are confident that it will happen under this administration. But while we do so, we look at um, building communities, um, people coming together, single mothers. That's a great focus of this ministry. The Mom D project, mentoring our mothers and dads. People look forward to that engagement where we can help a single mother with five children to study at home with a DVD and earn an income um, so that she can take care of her family at home and she can secure the educational uh, journey of that child because these, these are no small things. These small things matter. These little children who are five and six years old, they are going to be the future leaders of Trinidad and Tobago in the next decade. And if we do not pay attention to that, that, that child, we may end up with a delinquent or we may end up with a person who is seeking tertiary education, who wants to drive the society to be part of a better society. So this is what we see taking care of us, our, our vulnerable, our single mothers, taking care of the poor, uh, the homeless, the elderly, the sick, the differently able. There are several programs under the Ministry of the People and Social Development that are untapped by the public and seeks to address the needs of persons from all walks of life and who are in various scenarios. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. And that story brings us to the end of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching.